As we begin our session tonight, we would just like to start with a land acknowledgement. Tonight, we acknowledge that we are situated on the traditional land of the Anishinaabeg people. The Anishinaabeg include the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Powhatami nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We are dedicated to honoring indigenous history and culture and committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people. So tonight we're all here to talk about our child's transition to school. So thinking about our child's transitioning to school can be both exciting and scary. So tonight we're gonna walk you through the transition timeline starting in January and through to September when they'll start in hopes to ease some of the concerns and questions that you might have. It will allow for information sharing from a variety of members from teams who will support your child during their transition or while they're in school. So starting in January, we'll talk a little bit about what's happening right now. So your resource consultant or infant development worker may have already reached out to you to talk to you about the projection sheet. Um, and this provides the school board with a little bit of numbers about the number of children that are transitioning to school with identified needs. It just gives a little bit of information about your child in each area of their development and supports the um, schools in advocating for the needs of their school. So right now, what you need to do is look at registering. So children are able to start school in September of the year that they turn four or five. And kindergarten is an introduction to school and provides a foundation for future learning. So if you haven't already done so, that's now is your time to register for a school board. Infant development workers and resource consultants may also start talking to you about completing a student profile. So this profile provides a little bit more information about your child and what they're gonna need to have supports in place at school. Any additional reports, supports available um, and how much support they might need in terms of dressing, eating or toileting. So as you complete this with your resource consultant, a copy would be provided to you as well as to the school team. And I'll just invite Corey to talk to you a little bit about the early on child and family centers. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. My name is Corey Patton. I'm the preschool services supervisor at Empower Simcoe. And my role is to support infant and child development programs across the county and early on child and family centers, specifically in Barry, Bradford, and Innisfil. Early on Child and Family Centers themselves, though, are programs across the province, and you'll find them all over Simcoe County. They offer parents and caregivers um, and their children up to their seventh birthday um, a range of core services, which are all free. We have um, stay and play programs, some that we used to call them pre-registered programs, so you can do some really cool things like Mother Goose um, or Life with Baby. Um, many of us have outdoor programs as well as indoor programs. We really focus on that um, connection between adults and children in the relationship that you build together and those healthy attachments, not only for children and, and their parents, but also for their care providers. So we see lots of grandparents, um, alternative parents, care providers. Um, we do parent education workshops um, and information. We support healthy development as well um, in our programs, and we're all trained to do something called the ERIC, which many of you would have participated in when you began your journey with your children, um, where we can do some screening right on the spot to help you um, or your children determine what services might be available to you in the community. We also offer resources across the community, so sometimes you might have a, a question about um, play, about an activity, about a resource, um, and our facilitators are all trained in um, all of those things and can help you find that information. We base all of our work on, um, on 
um, four foundations, belonging, engagement, expression, and well-being, which is the same foundations that you'll find in the kindergarten program when your child moves on the pedagogy. So it's, it's really cool that we're working on those things ahead of time. Um, and starting in April this year, April, May, and June, potentially even the summer, you'll find opportunities to join um, any of our early on child and family centers for getting ready for K program. Those are all open for registration. So if you'd like to practice a little bit before you go to school and learn a little bit more about what school might feel like, you can um, follow the link on the screen. You'll receive these links after and you can join us for one of those programs. As I mentioned, there are early on child and family center programs across the county. They're operated by four different agencies across the county, but we work really hard to ensure that that programming looks the same anywhere that you go and you'll get the same level of service anywhere you go. If you go to any one of our websites, you'll have um, the ability to see and find each other or a program in your community. And there are also um, French language early on child and family centers operated by LeClay. So following March and as we move into April, we also start something called the Transitional Integrated Program Plan, or if you've made heard it referred to as the TIP. So the TIP is something that is completed specifically for your child that identifies where they're currently at in terms of their skills, what they might need a little bit of support with, and identify some strategies that has already been working well for your child in any location that they've been in, whether that's been at home, in childcare settings, at early ons, things that are already shown to be effective for your child that they can continue with the school team. So the tip is so important because it's written by all members of your early intervention team alongside you. So it really highlights um, the strengths and needs that you feel your child needs going forward within the school team. The TIP provides the school team with strategies that can be used immediately to promote that successful transition to school. And we'll start them off with that necessary information that they need to, to develop an individual education plan. So as you complete these transitional integrated program plan meetings with your child's team, then you'll also be invited to finalize the TIP. So this means that this TIP is not going to be shared um, until it's been finalized with you. And that means that the information that's in located in this tip is going to be reviewed with you by your infant development worker or your resource consultant. This allows you to give permission for the school team to have a copy. And if necessary, it also allows for referrals to be made to other service providers. As we move into May and June, your resource consultant and infant development workers will also reach out to you to possibly schedule a transition to school meeting. So this is a really great collaborative meeting with the school team, and it gives you an opportunity to share your visions and concerns for your child. You would get to share a little bit about what they enjoy doing, highlight their strengths, um, to help support them in getting to know your child before they start. Um, Parents with support of their resource consultant or infant development worker can share information on behalf of the early intervention team and discuss anything that's located in the TIP document. So if there's something in the TIP that you really want to make sure that that school team knows, these school transition meetings are your chance to share that information. And I'm not sure if you can hear my children in the background, but they are all saying hello to you as well. Um, this meeting also provides an opportunity to clarify referrals and supports from early intervention and allows for the family and school team to set the foundation for a positive relationship. And with that, I will pass it off to um, the YSAN program. Thank you, Megan. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the York Simcoe Autism Network, also known as YSAN, I'd like to welcome everybody and thank the organizers for the opportunity to share information about the Entry School Program. So my name is Sarah Ferguson. I am the OAP Supervisor with CLH Developmental Support Services, and I'm joined this evening with my colleague, Christina, who can introduce herself now as well. 
Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. My name is Christina Garrett. I work for the Center for Behavioral Health Sciences with McKenzie Health, also in the Entry to School program. I am a clinical coordinator overseeing a couple of our locations in Simcoe County. Thank you, Christina. So a lot of you might be wondering, what is YSAN? So the YSAN network is a partnership of agencies that came together to plan and provide programs offered to families by the Ontario Autism Program, or the OAP, in York Region and Simcoe County. You may recognize some of them or already be connected with them from um, other early intervention services. So actually, sorry, if you can go back two slides, please. So the logos up here to the top left, those represent all of our network partners. So in order to participate in the program, your child must have a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder, be registered with the Ontario Autism Program or the OAP, which means having an OAP number, and have received an invitation to participate from the OAP be between three to six years old as of December 31st, uh, 2023, which is that school age range, uh, be entering school, so that's kindergarten or grade one for the first time in September, 2023. Children are not eligible for the program if they're receiving core clinical funding or have an OAP funded active behavior plan, or if they've already started attending school. So I'm going to pass things over to Christina, who can tell you a little bit more about what the program looks like. Yeah, so within our program, it's delivered by a multi-interdisciplinary team. So we have a number of different um, members of the team in a variety of areas of expertise. So of course, we have experience with autism spectrum disorder, applied behavior analysis, ABA. Um, we have supervision by a board certified behavior analyst like myself for each of our locations. We work together closely with the speech and language pathologists, the occupational therapists, and of course, early childhood development. So the infant support uh, development workers, as well as the early intervention workers and resource consultants. So our program is up to six months of a half day group-based program. It's typically around three hours per day in a morning or an afternoon slot, five days a week followed by six months of consultation to the school. So ideally there's no gap in service there and the kiddos would go directly from our half-day group, or half -day group based program into that consultation phase when they would then be enrolled in school. It's funded by the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services. So there's no cost to the families directly. Um, we're delivered of course by YCN, sorry, Deliver Service in York Region and Simcoe County as, as Sarah has alluded to. And so our next group starts the beginning of March, 2023. That's our group-based service program. And that will end um, end of August. And then we will start the consultation phase in September for those kids who are in the program. As well as at the same time, another group-based program will start in September, 2023. And those kids will transition to school in January. So in terms of what's next, so how to learn more about the Entry to School program. Information can be found on our website, which is listed here in the slides. YSAN Network offers more than just the Entry to School program. So you'll wanna find the Entry to School tab to of course find information on that program. We have a number of different family information sessions hosted by our YSAN staff that are occurring between now and June of 2023. So on our website, there's also a spot to view the dates um, and times and you're able to sign up. And then in terms of registering for the program, you have to just email OAP intake. There's multiple routes, so are you in you can email OAP intake um, at ctnsy.ca, or you can call us at that 1866 number, or there's an online registration form on the website listed above. So there's a number of different routes um, that you could take to register for the program. Hey, good evening. It's Marcia Walker. I'm the Early Years and Child Care Coordinator with Simcoe County District School Board. While on the topic of registration, um, it is also time to register for before and after school programs at your schools. 
So before and after school programs operate in most schools, um, and they are provided by licensed child care operators. These are high quality programs that provide care for children in kindergarten to grade six before and or after school day hours and in some locations on PA days, winter break, March break and summer holidays. Um, please know that resource consultants support the licensed child care system, including the before and after school programs. So resource consultants can regularly visit the programs to discuss any challenges and build on the strengths and share resources to support the program as a whole. Um, to register for these programs, please contact the child care organization that is listed as the operator in your school to register for the program directly. These are not... Um, the registration does not go through the school boards themselves. They go through the licensed child care operator that is um, providing the program at a specific location. Please note that registration before June 30th is strongly encouraged. However, it's even more strongly encouraged to register now. Um, and also note that the before and after school programs follow the same pedagogy as our early on child and family centers um, with the How to Learn document, Ontario's pedagogy for the early years, with the four uh, frames of belonging, engagement, expression, and well-being, which um, grow into the frames of the kindergarten program as well. And you will also note on this slide that we have the listed um, licensed child care partners that are involved in multiple school boards in Simcoe County. Thanks, Marsha. So the next part of the presentation is around safety, toileting, and transportation, and will be addressed with some frequently asked questions. So we do have some school board representatives to hear across Simcoe County that will provide you with some specific information about their schools. If you have any general questions throughout the next little bit, this is your chance to pop them into the chat area. And like I said before, we do have some moderators that will be able to answer some general questions. If you do have any questions that are specific to your family and child, we do ask that you just reach out to your resource consultant or infant and child development worker. If they don't know the answer um, directly, then they'll support you in getting the information from the right person. We'll also take a look at some additional resources that may be available from some other agencies along with other community resources. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jacqueline McBride. I'm an elementary special education consultant with the Simcoe Muskoka District, a Catholic District School Board. And I'm pleased to be here um, co-presenting this evening. So um, with all school boards, your child's safety and well-being is our top priority. Jack, oh, there you go. So, I think sorry, I was there second. for a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 I was muted for a second by somebody. I don't know who. So, um, yeah, your child's safety and well being is our top priority across all school boards. So, just know that all boards in Simcoe County continue to work closely with and take advice from the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit on all matters related to COVID 19. So, currently, masks are not mandatory in our schools, but they are optional and they are welcome to be worn by your child if that is something that you choose. Children are encouraged to practice good hand washing hygiene and the school teams will definitely be supporting them with that. Uh, in terms of virtual schooling options, um, they would be different for each school board. So it's best for you to connect with the school board directly for updated information on that option. And just note that um, guidelines that are in effect today regarding the health unit don't necessarily reflect what will be in place in September. So we're constantly liaising with the health unit on those pieces. Um, so if you uh, connect with the health unit directly on their website or our school boards, you'll get the most up-to-date information. Next slide, please. Okay, safety planning. Again, safety is such a priority for all of us, right? So the schools and educators are committed to ensuring the safety of your child. And it's really important to discuss any safety concerns you may have uh, with the school team at the transition meeting. Some children may need additional support to adjust to kindergarten and school teams may address these through a variety of accommodations. So we have some listed here on the slide. I'll just go through them quickly. So some children may need additional supervision. Sometimes kids need um, stop signs posted throughout the environment, alarms or bells on doors. These are things that are common in our kindergarten classrooms. Um, there's a fenced play yard. Some children require hand-in-hand -hand transitions or social narratives. 
positive behavior support plans and reinforcement systems can be developed, and also individual education plans or an IEP can be created um, with some specific goals around your child's safety, and of course a medical plan to address any medical concerns um, that, that you have for your child. Now, where a student's behavior poses an ongoing risk of injury to self or others, a plan for safety may be developed under the direction of the principal of the school to support your child. So again, that's something that could be discussed at the transition meeting. And note that any um, support plans that are developed, um, they can, they're constantly reviewed and they can be updated at any time. They are working documents. So um, uh, I, I see in the chat, sorry, I'm just gonna address this right now, Megan, if that's okay. One person has asking, what is a social uh, narrative mean? Like a social story. So it's a little story to prepare your child for different situations. So it could be anything about, um, you know, how we use our hands safely at school or, um, safe ways to play at school or things like that. And they're always tailored to the individual needs of the child. So again, those are things that can be discussed at the transition meeting. Next slide, please. Toileting and readiness are, are definitely on a lot of parents' minds, of course. So it's important to promote independence in the washroom before your child begins school and discuss your child's anticipated levels of support in the washroom um, at the transition meeting to school uh, with the school team. Um, in cases where a child requires initial or ongoing support with toileting needs at school, note that accommodations can and will be put in place. So things include uh, visual prompting. Um, you can see like on the slide here, there's like a visual strip on the, on the top of the slide. So it just helps the children um, understand the procedure of, of how to navigate a washroom routine. Verbal prompting and reminders can also be provided. Time toileting schedules. Full support can be delivered in accessible washrooms and or change tables are provided as required as well. So um, just so that you're aware, educational assistants are the staff members at the school that support with toileting. It would not be the classroom teacher or the early designated uh, childhood educator. It would be an educational assistant. And um, in terms of providing supplies, parents would be um, required to supply the diapers, pull-ups, wipes and um, to ensure that they have a change of clothes um, sent to school. So I just advise that, um, you know, washroom accidents aren't the only reasons why kids might need a change of clothes. It's, it's prudent to have a couple sets of clothes, to be honest, at the school, label everything with your child's name, have them in like a Ziploc bag or some sort of bag that's identified right down to the underwear and socks, you know, and um, anything that's soiled, of course, would be sent home. Again, if you have any questions about this, you can certainly ask the school team at the uh, transition meeting. I was just thinking the same thing, Jacqueline. I was recently in a kindergarten and I saw so many pairs of socks <laughs> coming out extra. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Shannon Thompson. I'm a, a special education consultant supporting um, elementary and secondary in the public school. So in Simcoe County District School Board, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of a heads up about transportation in Simcoe County. It's provided by Simcoe County Student Transportation Consortium. Can't believe I got that right the first time. <laughs> this slide actually has live links to their website where you can find um, all kinds of information, including whether or not your child would be eligible for a bus ride to school or whether they're in the walk zone. You'll also find out what school weather zone um, your local school is in. Simcoe County used to um, have, for example, snow days throughout the entire county, and now there is a different zone for west, um, north and east, which would be up where I am in tiny township, Midland, Penetanguishene, over by Washago and Aurelia, and then the South Zone and Central. Sorry about that. Um, you'll also find out about bus cancellation and delays on this same website. Of course, um, I find out about school days and <laughs> snow days on Facebook, uh, but there is a, a link to the to the website for your information. And um, there's also some tips um, around safety and around what to expect when you're riding the school bus the first time. They provide something called the first rider program and they will send you information about that later in the summer. But when we were um, doing this presentation the first time I found two video links there on YouTube and you'll see them right here in the slide. The first one is a parent video. 
about how to prepare your child for their first bus ride. And the one to the right is a student video, which um, covers the same information, but really takes you on a little bit of a bus ride through the lens of a student. And in the case of specialized transportation, um, where there might be a van or a bus set, sometimes it's uh, available to book a, a, a session so that they can, you know, see what the van looks like and things like that. And um, when Jacqueline was talking about a social narrative, there are also some narratives about riding the bus for a first time or specialized transportation, um, just so that that can be reviewed over the summer or it can be reviewed, you know, in the morning in case there's a lot of anxiety about getting a ride to school. And uh, regarding specialized transportation, so unless there's an approval by a superintendent um, for specialized transportation, all students who attend their home school in the walking zone will be walking to and from school, often with the support from a parent or a group of uh, students. And those who reside beyond the walking zone will receive transportation on a school bus. There are some um, routes that have a shorter school bus for um, less populated routes. Someone else can let them in, I'm busy. <laughs> Um, in some instances, specialized transportation can be requested, and um, those are questions that you'll bring to your transition meeting that's going to be happening in May and June, so you're going to talk to your own school team about those questions. If there is a particular um, physical disability that impedes your child's ability to walk to school, um, there may or may not need a doctor's note or um, some kind of uh, documentation, but again, those questions can be addressed at your school meeting and they can give you the documentation and the information that you need for your particular case. Uh, there'll also be a section of the meeting that um, touches on any specific information. If you have, do have individualized transportation, for example, whether um, a harness or a booster seat, the weight of your child and things like that, um, if there are, you, you know, that particular circumstance. Okay, it's me again, Marsha Walker. Um, so let's talk the kindergarten at Simcoe County District School Board. Um, first of all, we want to encourage you again to register as soon as possible. Visit our registration page for information on how to, vis um, how to register online and complete the uh, registration application. The links are on this slide or included in the slide deck. You will need some documents when you register. You'll need your birth date documentation, your residential address, proof of your child's address, and your record of immunization. Please also note that on our Simcoe County District School Board website, there's plenty of resources um, available to you to help, your, to help children and families prepare for kindergarten. There's a wonderful video named Getting Ready for Kindergarten that was especially made um, new to kindergarten students. And we also encourage you to watch this video with your child and check out uh, the discussion prompts and ideas to help you prepare for the big day. Um, with that, we also have access to the Welcome to Kindergarten. Sorry, Megan, if you can go back one slide, that would be great. Awesome. And we also have a Welcome to Kindergarten booklet for an overview of the kindergarten program, um, which, which again, you can see what a typical day of kindergarten looks like in Simcoe County District School Board. Thanks, Megan. And I believe that Shannon is speaking to this next slide. I was just speaking, but I was on mute. So nobody heard what I had to share. <laughs> In terms of um, any special education questions you have, this document, um, if you're coming to the Simcoe County District School Board, it's called the Parents Guide to Special Education. And it addresses all of those um, general questions about special ed services in Simcoe County District School Board. School boards, including ours, are inclusive in nature and the primary grades, including kindergarten. But we do have um, specialized placements moving forward, usually um, beginning after the primary years. And any questions you have about placements, identification, your individual education plan, um, they're all outlined in friendly language, less educanese, as we call it in education. And there's a cipher in the back that explains what all those acronyms are. So whether 
um, I just recommend that that you get your hands on one of these. Uh, it's much easier to read than the special education plan that's put out by boards every year. Um, as well, when you register um, on the on the school website, you'll be prompted with. Um, questions about whether or not you have accessed or have concerns about your child's development. And I know that you are working with early intervention. So I just want to remind you to tip the little box in, um, in that question to make sure that the CERT doesn't immediately reach out to you and refer you to early intervention. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I just wanted to give some information about virtual learning in Simcoe County District School Board. All of the school boards have different um, plans for next year in terms of whether or not virtual learning will be offered. But in our case, on the registration page, you can see where this blue arrow is pointing. It's asking you um, to select what type of format you would like to request for the first year. It's not a guarantee. It's probably uh, mostly based on interest. So when you go to register, then you should look for that bottom checkbox. It says elementary virtual learning program application to register. And this is actually a live link to that section. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's me again. <laughs> um, again, I'm speaking for the Simcoe Muscova Catholic District School Board. And our motto is faithfully, inclusively, and equitably, we inspire every uh, student to realize their God-given potential. And that is exactly our intention as we welcome your child to our school board. This is a very, very exciting time for your child and your family. We understand that you'll have lots of questions along the way and that you may even be a little bit nervous about your child's transition to school. Rest assured that we are here to work in partnership with you to ensure a positive and successful transition to kindergarten for your child. I encourage you to register as soon as possible so that we can work together um, in beginning the process of transition planning. So you can do this by visiting the kindergarten registration page on the school board website. In order to register, you're going to need the following documentation, uh, birth date documentation for your child, um, residential uh, address proofs like proof of your child's address, record of immunization, and either the child or the parent's Roman Catholic baptismal certificate. If you or your child are not baptized Catholic and you are interested in a faith-based education for your child and considering registering your child at one of our schools, please contact the school directly to have this discussion. So that's it for registration, but no, we'll stay on that slide for a second, sorry. <laughs> Um, to also support your child with a transition to school, you will find some resources on our website as well. Uh, you'll find an awesome getting ready for kindergarten video and also a welcome to kindergarten booklet, which are both really helpful. Also note that all of our schools will have an open house event in the coming months, so you can check in with the school around the date and the time for your school's open house. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, Unlike some other school boards, we follow an inclusive model throughout um, our, our K to 12 programs at our school board. So inclusion is about relationships and belonging. It's about the attitudes we have and demonstrate through our actions towards each other. Uh, inclusion is a responsibility of everyone and we believe inclusion is rooted in the gospel. So in our school, all children are supported in the context of the regular classroom. In the regular classroom, there are two educators in every kindergarten classroom, a classroom teacher, and also a designated early childhood educator, also known as a DECE. And they work in partnership to facilitate the full day kindergarten program, which is a play-based uh, model of learning. So note that there could be a third educator in the classroom, an educational assistant or an EA, depending on the needs of the children in the classroom. Um, Although the placement for all students is the regular classroom in our school board, students do have access to other spaces in our schools depending on their needs. So as an example, some students may need to access, say, a resource space or a sensory space um, in order to calm, to regulate, or to engage in specific activities, again, depending on their needs. So when we meet with you during the transition meeting, uh, and planning process will discuss your child's strengths and needs and interests, ensuring they have access uh, to the required supports and services, any specialized equipment, uh, specialized transportation, as Shannon has spoke to earlier. And this transition planning process is about working together 
to understand and respond to your child's strengths, needs, and interests. So we want to establish a positive and collaborative homeschool relationship so that we can work together to support you through the transition process and in the years to come, of course. So on our website, you will find uh, the transition planning brochure that you'll see here on the screen, um, which may be a helpful resource to you and your family. And as well, you'll find our parent guide to special education, which helps support your understanding of special education services in our board. And once again, I encourage you to register as soon as possible so we can start planning together. Um, if you have any questions about the registration process, please don't hesitate to contact the school directly. The folks there will be happy to assist you. And if you have any questions about the transition process in general, um, specific questions as mentioned earlier in uh, this presentation, please connect with your uh, the school directly or your resource consultant or infant and child development worker who will liaise with one of our staff. So we look forward to hearing from you and to welcoming your child to one of our schools in September. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, unfortunately, I'm unable to see the participant list right now, but I would invite if we do have a participant from the Protestant Separate School Board here tonight. Okay, I wasn't sure if she would be able to make it tonight. Um, however, we do have the Protestant separate school board that would be an option for you and your child. Um, you would be able to find the information for the student registration and their welcome to kindergarten link. Um, on these links following the presentation, they'll be provided to you. And I will send out an invitation if we have anyone from the French School Board as well with us tonight. So again, the School Board does have a guide for parents to support the transition to school that you can access um, through the School Board directly. Um, there are links on this page that will support you in contacting the schools for more information. You can also ask your resource consultant or infant development work support worker if you have any specific questions about the registration to the French school boards. And similarly to the um, supports and things in place that the Catholic Board and the Public Board have already indicated. They do have guides to parents and different supports there as well to look at their programs. And I'd like to invite Dewan to participate if he's here tonight. Okay, so Mon Avenir is the um, other Catholic, or sorry, the other French school board that may be of interest for you and your family. They do have um, school boards in different areas across, or sorry, school locations across for different areas. Um, and if you are interested in further information about registering for the French school board or have specific questions about the French school, please talk to your resource consultant or infant development worker to support you in accessing the information that you'll need to support your child's transition. These links will also be available to you following the presentation for more information. And similarly, they do have a guide as well that may be supportive of you to um, look through to get your hands on to talk a little bit about what that program will look like. I now invite Angela to talk a little bit to us about Children's Treatment Network. Thanks, Megan. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela I'm with Children's Don't. Treatment Network. Um, okay. Oh. okay. 
I think someone's, oh, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm with Children's Treatment Network. I'm going to talk about uh, the next steps for your child if they're receiving occupational therapy, physical therapy, or speech and language services. And then also follow up with some resources that might be helpful to you along your journey. So with regards to um, rehab services, so if your child is receiving occupational therapy or physical therapy or speech and language um, services, your next steps will be to connect with your early intervention team. So it could be um, any of those service providers, the OTPT or SLP, um, or your resource consultant or your infant development worker. And they'll be able to help um, guide you with regards to those next steps. Uh, for example, you know, they can share how strategies that support your child will be can be shared with the school um, and answer questions around um, the equipment and what would be next steps if your child requires equipment. With regards to OT services, um, for school-based rehab services, the service delivery system has slightly changed in the last year. So I wanted to review that with you. And um, with OT services in the school board system, they're following what's called a tiered model of service delivery, which means that every school is going to have an OT come and visit with them for a period of time at some point through the school year system. And they're going to be working with the teachers and staff to support the students. Um, they'll provide some universal strategies that all children can benefit from within the schools within that um, school setting. And um, if more detailed services or individualized support is required, then um, that child can be referred specifically for OT services by the school staff. And of course, if you have any concerns at any time, you're encouraged to discuss those, your child's strengths and needs with your teacher. CTN is called a smart hub center, which means that you can call the number on your screen if you have any concerns along your journey about your child or youth's development. So that applies to any family within Simcoe and York calling this particular number to help find out more information that you might require if you have some concerns. Um, and it um, and they're available, the service is available to children or youth from ages zero to 19 or 21 um, if your child is still in high school. Other resources that you have at your fingertips include the um, an, a free online library called the Community Learning Library, and you can access content about child or youth development at your own on your own time, um, at your own pace. You can get a free account and all the information um, or the link to access the Community Learning Library is on your screen. And CTN also has a YouTube channel uh, where they post some. <clears throat> fun family activities. So um, we've posted things around birthday parties or sensory strategies you can do um, and use in the summertime. We also, through the Smart Hub Center, you could access brief resources. So um, a service provider could work with you to complete um, paperwork for funding or to maybe um, look for some specific camps for your family or for your child or respite services. And of course, the team that works with you and your child document on what's called the shared record. It's an online uh, record. And if you had any questions about your child's um, record, you can connect with your early intervention team to talk about some next steps, um, or you can also access CTN health records and their email is listed on this page too. CTN has a community and family participation program that you're all um, able to participate in. And um, you can access, for example, events. So you can attend any of the events hosted by CTN and their partners throughout Simcoe and York. We have a calendar on our webpage that you can um, look up to see what's happening in the month of um, February that you can attend. 
And um, you can also sign up for a newsletter that where you will get specific information about your community and what's happening in that community that might be of interest to you and your family. There's an online resource center as well that's managed by this program um, that lists links to various um, agencies or websites around information regarding a diagnosis or maybe, you know, pools in your area or recreation activities that might be going on um, throughout Simcoe and York. So it's finger, um, information at your fingertips in case you wanted to look up something very specific. Um, we also have an equipment loan program. So you could borrow specialized recreation therapy and complex clinical equipment should you need um, that might help you or your child participate and uh, more activities in the community, whether it be sledges for um, skating or to play hockey or um, uh, sit ski to, um, or such, yeah, we don't have a sit ski, sorry, <laughs> but I was thinking about that. We have opportunities to try sit skis, but we don't have that yet in our equipment loan program. Anyways, um, we do have quite a bit of um, various equipment pieces that, you, that might be of uh, support and help to you. Um, and um, you can look at the equipment that we have available through the link that's listed on your uh, page here. Um, and you can also reach out to our equipment loan coordinator and they can help provide um, some more direction around that. And then we also have a family support um, service. However, it's in the moment being co-created with other, other families. So um, it's not quite yet launched. Um, however, keep your eyes open on the CTN webpage for more information about um, connecting with other families. Um, oh, sorry, and I'll just also mention that we have the QR code down there as well in case you want just um, to access what the Community and Family Participation Program is on the CTN website, that QR code will take you straight there, and then you can see all of this information that is listed on this page. Great, thank you, Angela. Thank you. Hello again, it's my turn again. Um, I will chat just really quickly about the Empower Co Family Support Program. Um, and Nancy will be chatting about a similar program at Catalpa. Empower Simco um, supports, if you wanna pop onto the next slide for me. Fantastic. So the Family Support Program at Empower Simco um, offers family-centered case management supports to families who have children who are under the age of 18 still living at home and with a diagnosed intellectual disability. So if this doesn't, <clears throat> this isn't a program that will be available to every family that, that's here on the meeting today, but it might be available, it, it might be something that you're interested in or um, can take advantage of now or in the future. If this is a possibility for you or if this is a program that may benefit you and your child, your resource consultant or infant and child development worker will help you to access the program. We have family support workers who can support families to access community resources. Um, they, they may come and visit you in your home, a little bit like your resource consultant or, or your infant and child development worker might. Um, they can provide you with some information, some referrals, um, support for funding and some of those pieces. Um, it could be a single resource appointment um, or, or a series of three resource appointments to help you get some information, um, get some applications completed, or it may activate ongoing and regular support until your child turns 18. So um, as I mentioned, if this is something that may be of interest to you or um, is a program that your child might qualify for, you can make um, a direct referral yourself online. Um, you don't need to go through a doctor or anything to do to get that far. Um, you can do it online on our website. You can um, call our, um, you can call the lovely Laura, our admin associate. Um, and if you'd like some support to do that application, your resource consultant or infant and child development worker can help you with that.
Hi everyone, my name is Nancy Wright. I'm a family resource worker with Catalpa Community Support Services. And as Corey said, our, our roles are um, very similar. Uh, basically the difference is really geography. So um, Catalpa has offices in uh, Midland, Collingwood, Aurelia and Alliston that support the surrounding areas. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. So for eligibility for the family resource services, um, your child would need a diagnosis of an intellectual and or physical disability. Um, and this could be accompanying other diagnoses such as ASD, FASD or Down syndrome. Um, I mentioned the areas that we support. And again, it's for children um, entering school up until their 18th birthday. Um, child and family goals are identified as part of an individual family service plan, and the plan is built on some of the family and child strengths and areas of need. Um, we can support with case management, which may include some um, coordination of services, uh, referrals, uh, as Corey had mentioned earlier, accessing resources and planning for um, transitions. Go to the next slide. Um, so how to refer, again, um, families can self-refer to our program or with consent, their uh, current service providers can complete the request for service. Um, they are linked here on, on this slide. Um, if you have questions about eligibility, I would encourage you to contact our program assistant, Whitney. Um, and her contact information is here either by email or by phone. Um, if you're looking for other programs thinking that, oh, my child doesn't qualify for this program, Catalpa does offer other um, programs related to children's services. And you can find more information about those services either through the infographic that is embedded into this program or by checking out Catalpa's website. Thanks. Thank you, Nancy. So along with those community supports um, that you might be considering, thank you to the school boards for sharing information tonight. Um, that leads us right into September to December, and it's time for your child to go to school. So what happens now? So once your child starts school and the school has all of the information that they need about your child, it's time for your infant or share your resource consultant or infant and child development worker to review that discharge process with you. So they'll be the ones that can talk you through um, those kind of next steps for you and your family that you can take um, as you move on to that next step in your journey. They'll be able to explain all of the details, let you know that about next steps and make sure that you're well on your way to a successful transition to school. So recording will be stopped now, and we will invite any general questions that you'd like answered through the chat box.